Today in the Pipeline Vlog, the balance of art and lettering. When I look through a comic book for the first time to try to decide if I want to read it or not, one of the things I just recently noticed I take into account is the balance between the art and the lettering, which is to say how much of each is on a page. I'll give you an example. There is a European comic called Blake and Mortimer. It's being translated and printed by Cinebook, and it's supposedly very good. It's got, uh, you know, great history in Europe. It's been around for a long time. It's, you know, critically popular, I guess. But I can't. I just can't read the book. I can't get excited about it. I mean, yes, it's a bit of that Lynn Clare style, and I'm not a firm Lynn Clare kind of guy. I know I'm supposed to like Tintin more than I actually do, but... The thing with Blake and Mortimer that really throws me off is that about three quarters of the page is text. I don't want to read a novel. And it's not that I don't want to read a book. It's not that I don't want dialogue to happen. It's not that I just want explosions in every comic book I read. It's more that I need a balance between the art and the lettering. I need to have some sort of pace when I read a comic book. I have to flip to pages every so often. I don't want to get stuck on one page forever because now I'm stuck reading line by line by line and it just gets tedious and boring. Again, I'll read a novel if I want some more of that, I want something more in my head. I want a comic book that balances the visuals with the story. And I think part of the visual balance is between art and lettering, which is something I don't think I've ever seen anyone talk about, except for the occasions where there's an exposition dump page and you get, you know, all dialogue for a page or two and then the story picks back up again. I don't mind that. I actually don't mind so much that there is an occasional expo exposition dump of a page if it buys me a better rest of the comic book. If that's what the writer needs to set something up, yeah, granted, it would be better if they were able to integrate that into the ebb and flow of the comic book. But, you know, that's not always possible. Sometimes it's not always possible in the short deadline the writer has to create the comic. Sometimes, uh, you know, the artist has to jam so much stuff in, it doesn't always work out that way. But, you know, I'm willing to, to balance it out. I'm willing to, you know, have a little give and take. But I need a comic book where you have a certain amount of of balance there, a ratio. I don't know what that ratio is. I don't think there's an exact number. I mean, obviously there should be less dialogue during an action scene, during a fight scene, during a car chase, for example. Those fast moving things, you shouldn't be slowed down reading all the dialogue or reading uh, caption boxes or anything like that. That would just be kind of silly. But, uh, you know, we need to balance it out a bit more than what Blake and Mortimer does, which is honestly something near atrocious. One of the books I like a whole lot, which is, you know, on the edge of this balance, is Largo Winch, which is another European comic that uh, Cinebook translates and publishes in print and digital, available now, that I love. I think it's a great book, and there are pages there where it is literally just a boardroom meeting at the company, where there's a bunch of guys sitting around the table discussing high finances and corporate takeovers and whatnot, and that's a lot of text on the page. They get away with it, Jean Van Ham gets away with it, Jean Van Ham, I guess, I, however you pronounce it, gets away with it because, one, the dialogue is actually interesting, and credit, of course, to the translators there as well for keeping it fluent in English. It, it, it's high drama, right? So the dialogue means stuff. It's propelling the story forward. And second, because as many of those pages as there are that feel overwritten or have an awful lot of dialogue on them, and too many word balloons, for example, for as many of those that there are, there's also the pages where Largo's in the middle of a car chase or in a jungle running for his life or something. It sort of balances out. It does lean more towards the dialogue, and that's fine because, again, the rest of it works for me. So it's one of those things, I think, with a book that I've already committed to and that I like, I don't notice as much. But if I'm just flipping through a book, if I'm looking at the first three or four pages online or if I'm looking at a book in a store, if I flip through those pages and I see that it's going to be a slog to get through... If my first impression is that I'm going to spend too much time, you know, looking at the lettering and not enough time looking at and enjoying the art and the storytelling, then I'm not going to read the book. So it's something I just want you to take a look at and see if there's any books that 
you've ever turned away because of this lack of balance, or if there's one you read because you think balances it out so nicely, let me know. Drop a comment in the comments below, of course. This is YouTube. And please subscribe. And think about not just lettering, but what it's there to letter, and that is all that dialogue, all that exposition, all those captions, all the stuff that goes into a comic book. It all matters whether we realize it or not. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again real soon. Blah, 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 car chase, blah, blah, too much blah, not enough action.